Freenas 11.2 U5 was released a few days ago, and I loaded it on my systems we have here, and it worked. That's the important part. I didn't have any problems with, uh, we did a new install and an upgrade, just something we had to get done the other day, and both of those worked, and we're rolling it out to client machines, and so far, so good, no issues. It's just a minor update, so there's not anything groundbreaking, but there is at least one potential Samba CVE denial of service, so I do recommend upgrading it for the security that comes with that right there. It's not anything earth shattering. It does require them to be inside your network because please don't expose FreeNAS and Samba and all your shares to the internet directly. But it's a denial of service essentially against people on your local network attacking Samba. So it's important that you update it. I will at least say that. Now let's look a little bit more in detail at it. There are a couple known issues here. One is with the OAuth cloud credentials that support added, that they added to the new, new UI, and it sounds like it, the total fix won't be destined until 11.2 U6. Uh, it's part of the way that OAuth is authenticating with there isn't working properly. Also, when configuring Microsoft OneDrive, OAuth populates all the credentials except for drive ID, determine drive ID, log in here, and I have an instruction how to get a workaround for that. Sounds like Amazon Cloud Drive is broke. Now this is the specifically Cloud Drive, which is not S3, it's a different service. So it sounds like that may be discontinued in here. Uh, Mega Cloud Service not working. So that's, you know, if you were thinking about using Mega, apparently you can't, <laughs> so that's still broken. Uh, there's also the edge case here. And I thought this was a really interesting bug where if you have more than one of the same plugin and a plugin fails, it would delete the base plugin, not the second one. Apparently that's a big problem and they do have kind of a workaround. So be careful if you're adding the same plugin more than once, there are special use cases where you may want to do that. And uh, you got to make sure it deletes the right one in the cleanup process. And there is a note about that in here. I didn't have any problems with the update, uh, breaking any of the jails that we had in system, they seem to work perfectly fine. And I don't have any double jails, so I didn't really get in depth on testing this. Now, for the rest of the improvements, there's a lot of little things that are up on there, updates to Python, libcrypt, but one of them that stood out was the update AMD CPU temperature. This made a lot of people who are building systems with FreeNAS and Ryzen. Uh, we've been thinking about building one ourselves with a Ryzen chip. They're very power efficient for the amount of uh, processing power you get with them which also power efficiency means they run cooler, but FreeNAS was reporting them improperly. Now this is gonna be new, a new issue you're gonna have when new components come out, such as Ryzen, where there are issues trying to read the temperature from and things like that. But through these bug reports, this is why I remind people all the time, you can't just throw your hands up in the air and say, it doesn't work, it never worked, I'm not gonna build it with this. That doesn't solve the problem. The developers may not have a rise in themselves. So your bug report submissions uh, help them figure out why it's reporting 80 centigrade as opposed to 40 centigrade in the BIOS, and then they release a fix for it. This is one of those things that remind people a lot, these bug reports are absolutely important. As far as uh, here's my system, nothing on mine uh, changed much. Everything's still working fine, like I said, but uh, this is a older Xeon system that we have for our free NAS. Uh, no problems, the update, everything from iSCSI to uh, the storage to the networking interfaces, nothing born, nothing to really report. So it's just kind of a, uh, other than I'm excited because it was a lot of small improvement updates, but there's one, no problem, so it's not a most exciting update, which is good. We don't really want exciting when our storage server. I love when, you know, amazing new features came out, like when it came with the new UI, but when there's incremental updates and there's small improvements, I'm kind of happy to just load it and go on about my day uh, because I store a lot of data in here and mostly it's for my videos right now is what this particular server is being used for. And I like it when they just work so I can continue on making videos and have a place to save them. So that worked quite well for here. Uh, this also is currently a VM storage house for us. Uh, we have a lot of VMs in the system and it's connected at 10 gig and all of that worked perfectly fine as well. So like I said, not a whole lot to talk about with this particular release. It, I was happy that it worked well. The upgrade went really smooth. Always back up before you do update and as I've mentioned before in previous versions updates, the way that FreeNAS does its update, it keeps what they refer to as like a slice on the drive. So you can roll back if you need to, if it boots up and you go, wow, there's something in this version that doesn't work well with my system. You can go in there and say, well, set the active partition to be the previous version essentially. And it will then go back to the previous version. And until that update 
is uh, released, you can do it. And yes, you can skip updates. You can go from like U3 to U5. You have to read through and see if there's any major changes that would prevent you from doing that. But for the most part, that's not a problem if you wanted to skip an update kind of out of laziness because there was a U4 update and then there was immediately update after U4. I skipped it because I wasn't affected by the minor problem that they had to release and fix on there. So I went right to the U5. Just didn't feel like rebooting the system. And well, we don't ever reboot our systems unless there's an update. That's about the only time the system ever gets reboot. Uh, or when we start moving some components around and things like that. But that's it, update works great. Uh, feel free to run it, because I know a few people always say, hey, have you tried it yet? And they don't want to try it on their hardware. Uh, I keep all my stuff backed up. All my stuff is replicated, so I don't mind trying it out and being the guinea pig. And, and we do try it out in here and in our lab environment. So on some of our production stuff in our lab environment, once we know that, we roll it out to the clients. There's, you know, it, I'm pretty confident in all the updates, but I always like to see if there's any hiccups or problems and always read the details, especially with that minor potential issue with updates the IO cage and if you have more than one plug-in loaded at the same time that that's a uh that's definitely an issue there. Uh, so please keep that in mind if you're doing the more than one plug-in load. Read, read the manual, read the details. Don't just listen to me. That's what I'm going to say is overall important and see if any of those other things on the list affect you. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.